brilliant. And I'm so delighted to, to be here at this inaugural Galway Community Circus Mayhem Festival. I hope you're ready. <laughs> it's going to be crazy. Um, so there might be a few bangings and things here because it's very windy and doors are doing things. But we'll try to keep it under control. Um, so, uh, so it's my job to host and facilitate this conversation. And uh, we have a few little house rules before we begin. We have the lovely Leanna, who is hiding behind the GCC banner there. She's our tech support lady, and she is going to be moderating all of your comments coming in. So if you have technical questions, please write them in the chat, and she'll see them there. And if you have questions for any of our esteemed panelists, Oscar, Ian, Kiva, or Ula, please put them in the Q&A, and then we'll be able to see them um, after we've all uh, introduced ourselves and uh, described what we're here to talk about. So we're here to talk about the unity for circus teachers in Galway. And this is going to be a very exciting moment in the future of circus education uh, in Ireland. I, for one, am extremely excited to learn all about it and how it's come about and find out how all of these lovely people are involved. So, um, First of all, before we get into the meat and bones of it, maybe you could all just quickly introduce yourselves. So if we could maybe start with you, Ian, and just give us a little introduction. Great, yeah. Uh, hello, everybody. Uh, this is my first time doing a webinar, so uh, looking forward to uh, seeing how this experience goes. Yes, uh, my name is Ian Walsh. I'm a lecturer in drama and theatre studies at NUI Galway. Um, I'm also the representative for NUI Galway in the uh, Circus Plus Plus project. Um, uh, my research area, I guess, is uh, largely Irish theatre, but also uh, uh, popular entertainment studies, which is kind of what brought me to uh, the circus and indeed my interest in this project. So that's me. Super. Thank you. Thank you so much. Great to have you. Um, and uh, Kiva, maybe you could quickly introduce yourself. Hi, uh, my name is Kivo Dakri Bar. I'm a second year general science student in NUIG at the moment. Um, I'm also the auditor of the Baking Society and secretary of the Circus Society. Wow. Um, I have been a member of Galway Community Circus since September of 2011 uh, and I'm really really excited to hear all about this. Great, well very welcome Kiva. It's lovely to have you with all your experience here in the room and um, Next, could we um, go to you, Oscar? Hello, nice to see you all. Uh, my name is Oscar. I work as a circus teacher and as a pedagogical coordinator at Circo Circo, uh, the, the largest uh, circus organization in Sweden. Uh, I am also the representative of Circus Plus Plus from Circo's side, so I'm helping Ian and Ola, for instance, writing this curriculum. Uh, and we're looking very much forward to, to talk to you for an hour now. Great, thank you so much, Oscar. <laughs> Sorry? Should I pass on to Ulla as well? No, that's okay, we're going there now. But thank you, uh, Oscar. I mean, just the representative of one of the largest circus schools in Sweden, that's all you need to know. And, um, <laughs> and so Ulla, um, Ulla is going to set a little bit of the background for uh, this project and uh, tell us a little bit about how it came about and uh, also introduce yourself please, Ula. Yes, so uh, my name is Ula Hockanen. I'm the Executive Creative Director of Galway Community Circus here in Ireland. And uh, um, basically we are here to, to spend an hour to talk about a project that I have personally and, and our organization has been involved in since 2014. So um, uh, back in 2014, um, through um, our European partnership, we, we started uh, working towards creating um, a, a third level education for circus teachers. And, uh, and what we are now in 2020, so six years later, uh, we are still on this road and it's getting more and more exciting, which is, which is great. So, um, as Ian, Ian mentioned, the project is called Circus Plus Plus, and it's a European research project 
towards building a, a new degree program for university level. And it's really meant for the people who, who are dreaming about either becoming youth and social service teachers or who maybe are working in the field already and for whatever reason might like to have a degree in their, in their pocket at some stage as well. So um, it's, a, it's a groundbreaking project. Uh, it's the first time ever um, that we are creating a, a European curriculum for this uh, bachelor level uh, degree course in this field. And, um, and at the moment, what we're doing, we're, um, we are on the second phase of the project. So um, uh, back in, in 2014, we, um, the partnership started by kind of looking at what kind of educational opportunities are existing at the moment in this sector. And uh, we talked to a lot of people working as, as youth and social service teachers, and we asked them kind of what, what was their journey? Like, how did they end up doing the jobs that they're doing? And uh, we also asked them like, what they feel, what kind of training needs do they have themselves? And are they being met at the moment? And we did loads of surveys to um, current employers, organizations and, and institutions who are, um, who are hiring service teachers and, uh, and also future potential employers. And we asked them what they thought is important um, from, a, from a professional youth and social service teacher. What, what are their kind of expectations? And after all that work, we, um, the partnership created um, a framework of, of references uh, for youth and social service teacher. And this is now um, the, the base that, that we are working from um, at the moment as we are building the, the curriculum for the BA course. Um, as I said, it's a European project, so there's a lot of us involved. It's not just Ireland or not just Sweden. Um, the, the project itself, um, the Circus Plus Plus, is um, coordinated by the University of Tampere in Finland. And um, in total, there are three universities from, uh, from Sweden, Finland and Ireland, and then uh, five circus schools involved in the project. So we have, um, from Finland, we have Sorin Circus, um, a really brilliant uh, circus school from Tampere. We have uh, Oscars organization, Circus Circus, and also the Stockholm University of the Arts um, as partners. From um, Prague, from Czech Republic, we have uh, Circo N, a uh, fantastic circus school from there. And, uh, and from Paris, uh, or actually a, a suburb, uh, Bagneau, near, near Paris, we have uh, Le Plus Petit Cirque du Monde, um, a circus school from, from France. And, um, and then ourselves, Galway Community Circus and NUI Galway, um, as well as the International Youth and Social Cir Circus Network Caravan. So that would be the, the partnership. So it's quite, quite a big, big partnership. And, uh, and the project is, is funded by Erasmus Plus. Uh, so European Union is, is the funder. And, um, and it's part of what they call a, a strategic partnership in the, in the field of higher education. Wow, that, that's very impressive. I mean, to have three universities and five different circus schools and all, across all of these different regions across Europe, it's um, it's really something, and I, I, you can easily see this doesn't happen overnight. So, um, you know, the, it's taken you six years already to get this far, and we're still at the beginning of the journey. So, it's it's um, it's fascinating. And how did you get involved then, um, Ian, through the National University uh, in Galway? How, can you tell us a little bit about your the, the relevance of this project for NUIG and why you wanted to get involved and, and what does it mean for NUIG? Yeah, delighted. Um, uh, we're very excited about the project. The project maps so well onto our own uh, kind of core principles um, in the sense that um, it fits with Drama and Theatre Studies' commitment to evaluating performance 
practice uh, and indeed developing practice as research. Uh, it speaks very clearly in uh, its uh, emphasis on, on youth and, and, and social circus to our own commitment to the idea of performance as being important uh, for society with its emphasis on using the arts to develop young people um, and in the terms, uh, in particularly in, in the side of social inclusion, I guess, as well. Um, the collaborative nature of this project uh, looks to the principle of working as an ensemble, uh, not only in the practice and the fact that we ourselves, I guess, are an ensemble in, in the universities and the circus partners, but also in the curriculum itself. There's such an emphasis on teamwork and ensemble building, um, which again is, is, is our own core principle within Drama and Theatre Studies. Uh, and then also uh, we have a commitment to uh, local partnerships as well. Um, so we're delighted to be able to, to develop this with Galway Community Circus um, uh, as, our, as our local national partner, but then also internationally uh, to be involved with these uh, uh, other prestigious universities and prestigious circus schools as well is, uh, is quite a treat. I guess in terms of um, our own vision of circus arts, um, it's one that we identify, we identify it as an area that offers society and communities uh, models for working together. So models of inclusion, uh, it develops skills to aid in task completion, it develops individual agency and it helps both individuals and communities build resilience. So for us, this degree, uh, the, what circus arts offers, I guess, speaks directly to what we want our arts graduates to have in terms of skill sets, in terms of ambition, um, that idea that they can uh, work independently, but also work in groups. They have so many different uh, transferable skills they'll get from a degree like this. They could use in all kinds of industries outside of just uh, circus teaching as well. But obviously the, the kind of core emphasis is on um, teaching youth and social circus. But um, for all of those reasons, we're, we're, we're very excited to be uh, involved. Um, how we came to the project, I guess, uh, it was firstly Goey Community uh, Circus uh, approached us and we were just delighted uh, to, uh, that they did that. Um, uh, and uh, we've been working closely ever since. And indeed, we're, we're working on another project as well, which is lovely, uh, uh, called Wires Crossed as well uh, with uh, Goey Community Circus. Um, in terms of you know what it's offering us and, and the benefits for the for the university, I, I guess I've said already in terms of the arts graduates, but also I guess uh, circus is something that has kind of a peripheral. Um, uh, it's peripherally in our curriculum in terms of theatre studies through various acting techniques, through looking at popular entertainments, etc. What this does though uh, is gives it a much more kind of. Uh, coherence. Uh, it'll have its own degree, um, but hopefully there, there might be opportunities for theatre studies students and circus students to mix, etc. You know, we have this lovely building in Galway called the O'Donoghue Centre now, where it can be really a real hub uh, for the creative arts, um, and uh, we're happy for it to be uh, part of that. Personally, uh, I'm just loving this uh, in the sense that uh, it's such a positive project. The, the people, the partners that I'm working with, um, are so wonderful uh, in their passionate commitment to education, which is lovely. Uh, and they, you know, uh, we've had some uh, um, not quite robust, but I guess you know, uh, uh, passionate exchanges on different issues, etc., which has been just really lovely because uh, it shows how much people care about this particular discipline, how seriously they're taking it as a form that that it can offer so much uh, uh, and that kind of breadth of vision and ambition is really, really refreshing. Um, and it's lovely to be part of that. It's lovely to meet these European partners. Hopefully there'll be opportunities in the future for us to develop and uh, maybe research projects together from this as well. So I don't see this as one project in itself. Perhaps it's a starting point in a much larger uh, um, uh, community project for all of us, I guess. Um, so yeah, I think that's, that's, that's part of it. I guess Galway Community uh, Circus are so dynamic. They're so impressive. Uh, um, uh, uh, and to me, uh, it's, it's just a joy to work with them on the, on the national implementation side as well. Uh, uh, not to mention uh, to work with Oscar, of course, is, is also wonderful uh, in Sweden as well. Is that okay? Is that enough? That's yeah. That, that's absolutely fantastic. Thank you so much. There's loads of information there and loads of things popping into my head. I'm scribbling away here. I'll have to come back and ask you a few questions um, uh, in, in a few minutes. Um, but that really gives us a good oversight of how you and the GCC have come together to kind of form this partnership and support each other. 
Um, you know, so that, that's a really brilliant. Thank you, Ian, for that. Um, Kiva, you, as you said in your introduction there, you, you have been a youth circus student. You have actually gone through the ropes of the Galway Community Circus, literally and metaphorically. So could you tell us a little bit about that and what does it mean for you to be, to have been a student there and what would it mean for you to have a, a course like this and to have a possibility of circus as a future professional career? Um, I suppose for me, so I joined in September 2011 when I was 11, so that's, Jesus, nine years um, I've been Galway Community Circus. And for me, uh, coming up through circus, it's been a really, really important part of my life. Um, uh, I suppose because I was really quiet as a child. I wasn't necessarily shy, but I was really quiet and I didn't put myself out there or anything. And circus... Um, was this really great inclusive space where I didn't actually have to be loud or anything. It was this great space where I could be quiet and I could be myself and I could still be included and I could still do all these great things with other people. And I was just totally accepted for who I was. Um, and so that was, that was really, really great um, for me to have this space and then to really accept who I was as well as um, it was also a really great non-competitive environment where you could still, um, you know, learn stuff and push yourself to your physical and mental limits, trying new things um, without the pressure to like win or anything along those lines. So that was really important for me. And of course, the people and the teachers um, and the absolute variety uh, was absolutely amazing. All these different approaches and ways of teaching and learning and um, it was really really just amazing uh, such like a rich sort of thing so that's been really amazing for me and then the possibility did you, of having did you see did you think you would like to go into it as a career yeah I mean on and off I've been like yes no yes um, because of course it's such an amazing sort of adventure to be as a career but also it seems really difficult not in a but you really really have to be sure that this is like your passion um, and that this is what you want and you really have to commit to it um, because of course it's amazing um, mm -hmm. but it's really hard as well I think and if there had been the opportunity for you when you were making a decision to go to university, would it have been something that would have, if, if that opportunity was there, do you think it would have tempted you? If it was there, I think it definitely probably would have been number one on my list. <laughs> um, obviously, there's different things um, like what exactly it would have done like say if it was a three-year or a four-year degree or if you had the possibility to do an Erasmus or an internship on that those would have affected my choices but I think circus being in the title it definitely would have been up there as number one yes okay super and so for you as as, as a young person growing up then it was really kind of life-changing to give you this this chance to meet and interact and do all of these activities absolutely 100% life-changing um, in just for me personally it was a space like I said I know I said this before where I could be myself mm -hmm. and that was great um, and you could come in wearing weird clothes or not weird clothes and you could try your best and yeah for me the lack of competitive spirit and and of course so many amazing uh, students and teachers came in and out of circus so you get to know these amazing people and you would do these like wacky things that you you would never ever do in life and you might find out oh you know I'm actually really good at doing this like one weird pose where I do this or I'm really good at doing the splits but I can't throw a ball up and catch it you know <laughs> and it was just it was this sort of thing where everyone had like their one thing that they could do and everyone shared that. 
Fantastic. Thank you so much, Kiva. That's great. We're going to come back to you with more questions in a few minutes. Um, but next we'll go to Oscar. So, um, so Oscar, you already have a well-established circus school in Sweden and you work with a range of different sorts of people. So what, um, can you tell us a little bit more maybe about how circus education is established in Sweden, how it is embedded, who can access it, who is it for, you know, just the general overview of how is it perceived? I will, I will give you a short on that because uh, it's my, my organization, Circus Circar, is now 25 years old this year. Uh, so we're not a massively old circus, but our development was very, very quick and very, very strong. Uh, so from the beginning, uh, mid nineties, uh, what they, what these uh, these young artists and actors that wanted to do circus circus was that they wanted to they wanted to create to introduce this new art form in Sweden. And in that in those days, they were they were planning on okay, so how do we introduce a new art form? Uh, but to do that, you need to do circus as an art form, you need training space. And training space wasn't available. There was no training space to be had, uh, which meant that they, they immediately started collaborating with the school system uh, to, to, um, to get access to the school gymnasiums. They would go to, go to the schools and they would say, hi, can we maybe borrow this? Like in the evenings, if we teach our kids during the days so they 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 kind of fell into the educational world without without actually without actually having planned it uh, and realized that they had so much inspiration to to gain from these these youths that they were teaching and that there were so much things being invented and that they could see that in this group of 20 25 kids who are there's always five kids who are very good at sports there's five kids who are not good at sports and then there's a, a middle a middle ground of, of, of the of, of the of the class but all of a sudden they could see okay we can bring in these five who has never been able to score a goal in the soccer and they they have they have special skills and talents that can be used in in circus so so the sort of impact of seeing what social circus would mean was very very powerful uh, and quite quite soon uh, it was it was agreed that we needed to be able to train this as a prof to become a professional circus artist in Sweden so they used our sort of welfare system <laughs> to to sneak around uh, the, un the uh, sort of unemployment in education for the unemployed they were not unemployed, basically. Most of them were working all the time, but, but they managed to sneak, sneak in uh, a professional art, artistic education um, funded by, uh, as, as a um, development, develop people to be able to take part in the workforce. Uh, <laughs> and, and that devolved into, into um, uh, uh, fr from that point, there was professional education in, in Swedish circus world. That was in the late late 1990s, and in the beginning of the of the of the 20 is it 21st century, yeah, something like that. Uh, we we also we also got our first university degree, uh, where you could become a professional circus artist in Sweden. It was hosted by by us from the beginning. Uh, we were sort of a major partner in in creating this this university, but. When it took flight, we it, it was uh, it was left off to be included in dance and arts college instead. Uh, so now these days it's part of the part of the the Stockholm Stockholm University of the Arts, which since then it has it has even it has evolved into an even more bigger umbrella. But from the beginning it was the dance departments and it was the circus departments where you could so you could do a professional education in circus. And uh, since we also have like had very generous possibilities to come to Sweden as an international student, it became very quickly a very international school. Uh, so people were coming from all over the world to take part in this education at, at DOC, at University of Dance and Circus. Uh, so we, we, got, we got a lot of uh, international artists 
being getting their getting their education in Sweden, and it was quite fast because in in we we have we have a few other schools around the world in Montreal in, in Paris and so in a few different places that are sort of on on an equal equal standard with with the with the Swedish schools. Some years they're a little bit better, some years they're a little bit worse, but it's the same the same kind of proper elite schools. Uh, and but in just in just five or ten years, this has this has become one of the most most one of the strongest educations that you can get uh, as, a, as an aspiring circus artist. Uh, but there was no there was no like um, there was no mirror image of this turning into a an educational training. You you still wouldn't be able to become a, a teacher of these skills in Sweden. There's there uh, it's. We we have in Sirkar been using a lot of the students from DOC as teachers. We have been using the fact that the circus world has been growing exponentially very fast because of this good education that we can access very, very highly skilled professional trainers uh, for our courses, but they're not teachers. They're not, most of them have no, no, no teaching background uh, more than teaching in their youth school where they, where they were as, as kids. Uh, so when the sort of opportunity arises that that uh, in in the in the caravan in the caravan network that we wanted to create this uh, this university degree and get a proper education in, that will mean that that circus teachers can get this equal amount of of um, uh, uh, equal amount of self-esteem and feel that they can they can really make changes they can really create things they can start their own schools they can uh, they can they can let this that let's use and social circus build and grow uh, outside into the country and we can we can be, and, and the circus world can grow very much, grow a lot faster again uh, I think that's our hope of the of the plus plus project that that's where we're that's where we're heading uh, stronger more 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 knowledgeable teachers who can actually who actually knows why they why they tell people to do a front flip in, the, in a particular way um, fantastic thank you Oscar that's that's I mean it's there's so much breadth of information there and knowledge and I just you, you touched on the caravan network there I just want to ask Ula maybe Ula because there's people watching here that might not know what the caravan network is so maybe you could just tell us really quickly what that is. Yeah, sure. Um, so Caravan is, it started as a European network, but now it's actually, it's the international youth and social service network. It's a European Union funded network with, uh, with an office in Brussels. And uh, at the moment it consists of about, I think there are about 35, 40 members from around the world, actually, um, mainly from, from the Council of Europe countries, but actually from all over the world. And um, it's a really proactive network to develop this sector internationally. So um, Caravan would be involved in, um, in projects like this, this kind of research project, both in, in the kind of long-term education, but also short-term practical training courses for service teachers. And uh, then it would also focus on advocacy to, to promote the importance of youth and social circus and the impact that it has. And, um, and then a big part of it is just to bring people together. So through Caravan, we would organize lots of different youth exchanges. I know Kiva has been all over Europe with us uh, in many countries. And, um, and then also exchanges and training for trainers and, and circus managers and directors. So it's that kind of peer network and support and sharing and learning from each other. And that's really the, the kind of principle of, of the sector. Where did she take you, Ula Kiva? I want to know where Ula has taken you. Ooh, Ula has taken me to Kilkenny. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> the most exotic. Well, it's um, definitely outside the five kilometers limit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I've gone to a lot of places actually. So there was Kilkenny, there was London, uh, there was Paris, there was Finland, there was uh, Prague. Yeah, a lot of places. It's been amazing. Just normal stuff then, yeah? <laughs> <laughs> so I see now a little bit more about why this has changed your life so much. Um, 
So, I mean, even just doing that kind of shows you how broad a spectrum a youth circus has and how broad a reach it has. And I think that many people don't realize how far and how strong that network is across Europe between circus practitioners. Yeah, and can I add to that, Lucy? Um, yeah. I think that you're so right. I think uh, traditionally, I mean, circus sector, of course, is, has always been very international, people moving uh, across borders. And, um, and that kind of, that principle is um, what we want to kind of have in the, in the Circus Plus Plus uh, research project as well, and, and in the future decree. So it's really important for the partnership, obviously, that we develop this um, on a, on a international, true international partnership, so that we are really trying to kind of navigate um, through the, all the various national contexts because the service sector is very different in, in Finland or, or France or, or Ireland, Sweden, Czech Republic. So we are really trying to um, kind of come up uh, with the goods um, by, by kind of sharing and discussing um, all the differences and all the similarities. But not only that, we also really want to create a decree that would hopefully enable the future students to, to travel and to learn from different countries and learn in different contexts because that's so important. So, so hopefully um, the future student of the degree course can take models in the various uh, universities. Uh, they might be able to do um, uh, internship um, in the different circus schools um, or like an exchange program. Mm. That's amazing. I mean, it, that would be such a great thing to be able to um, for students, I imagine I would have absolutely loved to have done that, to be able to go into different times in different places with different environments. Um, talk to me a little bit more about that, Ian. In terms of you in the NUIG, um, you mentioned when you were talking about um, how uh, meeting people like Ula and Oscar um, and learning about all of the work that they do and how seriously they take circus as an art form. Can you talk to me a little bit more about how, how and you also talked about how circus is embedded in the theatre um, course that you r run there currently. So can you, can you articulate that a little bit more and talk also about how this kind of interaction of universities will work with the NUIG or is it already happening? Yeah, there's lots there. Um, I guess uh, the, the first thing I guess would to, be, to say would be obviously um, in our, our own degrees that we have currently, I guess, are there's an emphasis on performance as well as drama and theatre. So it's, it, it's, it's looking at uh, performance in its widest sense. Also, I think uh, as part of most drama degrees and, and, and we have a particular emphasis in our own courses, uh, there's the whole area of what they call uh, applied theatre and performance as well. So that sense of, you know, how does uh, performance uh, help in communities in terms of education or in terms of social inclusion um, or how does it indeed could it help uh, in youth projects that sort of thing uh, applied performance would very much look at that area anyway now obviously uh, with the expertise that we have currently etc we're, we're more uh, inclined to look at the theatre side of things but uh, there would be opportunities there for us to look at it in terms of, of circus as well just in basic theatre history of people like uh, the famous director Meyerhold, who would have uh, developed the acting training of biomechanics, very much influenced by circus, etc. So uh, even Bertolt Brecht, people of that nature would very much have been influenced by circus. So it comes into the theatre curriculum already. But I guess with this project, it, it's different in that, uh, so it's attractive for all those reasons, I guess, for us already. And the expertise, hopefully, that, that we're bringing to it is knowledge of how to assess those types of modules and how to uh, translate a lot of what's happening already in the uh, 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 circus schools uh, into kind of a university context and making that kind of workable. Uh, and the experience that we've had in relation to how to adapt uh, drama and theatre studies for the university context is very helpful in regards to that, particularly how you blend theory and practice, etc. Um, the challenge that we have, and, and also, you know, the, inter the really fascinating part of this is that we have three very different universities. We have a, a teacher training university, we have a performing arts university in Sweden that was mentioned, and then our own university, which people from our are, are familiar with, where we usually have our universities with sort of a teaching and research context. Um, so, uh, and anyway, go away, I guess, is very much a research university. It's, it's not a teacher training college. So, um, 
we're trying to marry those different needs that they have. And the way that we're looking at this is that we essentially have uh, a particular section, a third of the, of the degree will be locked down as concentrating in youth and social circus. But there's also those opportunities um, for the rest of the credits that they can gain. Uh, we can mess, well, no, I shouldn't say mess around. We can, we can tweak those to our own particular contexts um, in, in relation to it, it can fit into a teacher training college where they can do all their teacher training modules, but also uh, do this particular uh, specialist strand in, in, in youth and social circus. In our own BA context, I would uh, imagine that you could take something like English or archaeology or French and youth and social circus um, uh, as your degree, I guess. Um, uh, and then uh, for the performing arts, I guess, it, it's different again with the, with the different needs that they have in, in their particular institution and what kind of modules they'd have to take as kind of the basics of performing arts. So what's nice about it is we've already found an adaptable model to try and look at all these aspects um, that, that we, I can very much see as, as something that could be uh, implemented. Um, one thing that I am keen, I guess, you know, our own degrees in drama and theatre studies are all four years and we have a particular year uh, where they do go abroad, uh, where they do have an internship. Um, and, I, you know, the, the trend for NUI Galway definitely is to have more of most of our BA degrees eventually to be all really four years to offer those kind of opportunities uh, for professionalization um, for students, I guess. Um, and that would be a, another core thing that I think we would like to bring in and wouldn't be that difficult to bring in in our own national context. The phase yeah. we're in at the moment is looking at how we can share different things and get a model that can work for all of us, but actually can then be tweaked for the internet for the different national context. So the first phase is agreeing the overall curriculum, which is what we're doing now. And then seeing that the second phase is how that cur curriculum can be implemented for real, I guess, in the actual particular context of the different universities. Um, mm. So I don't know if that, hopefully that answers. Yeah, no, no, that's brilliant. I mean, that, that's very, we're getting into a lot of the detail now on how yeah. it's actually going to happen. So I think that will be very useful to a lot of people. Just mm. to say to anybody listening, if you have um, questions, we're inviting you to post them in the Q&A, which is at the bottom of your screen. And if you have technical issues, write it in the chat. Um, so um, if anybody has any questions for any of the panelists, please just pop them into the Q&A there and we'll, we'll take them as they come in. Um, so um, um, I guess one of the questions that has come in is about how can people get involved and how, who, what kind of students will, will go on this course and will they be able to, um, will they be then sent out on placements to different places around Ireland or and abroad, you know, so, so that would be kind of the questions. I don't know, maybe Oscar or Rula, um, who, who will go on this course? Oh, Rula, please. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, okay, so the research um, is ongoing and, and this part of the project um, finishes in 2022. So basically, um, in 2022, we will have a European curriculum for, for this um, BA course. Um, in that moment, we will also have a national implementation plan that will then have more detail on kind of all those like how, uh, you know, so how, what do we need to put in place in Ireland uh, to, to, um, to actually um, be able to offer this degree um, and, and how long might that process take and, and all those kind of, you know, uh, like an action plan, I suppose, um, uh, for, for the different national contexts. So we wouldn't have kind of answers to, to everything yet, for sure. But, um, but I suppose the, the dream would be that um, uh, what we're kind of thinking is that the future degree program would, would of course attract um, you know, young, young um, students just starting college. Um, so it's an undergraduate uh, degree that we are creating. Um, in Ireland, you know, often what 17, 18 year olds isn't that quite common in um, when you when you start the, the university studies but but also we kind of uh, we expect that um, a good few people who already have maybe worked in the field um, would join in and and uh, and study the degree and that's why it's so important to have those um, the kind of uh, really proper uh, recognition and validation of, of previous um, experience and learning so that, so that um, you know, you might not be able to do another three years of 
years of studying. And in that case, you might be able to kind of um, 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 get the degree with a little bit shorter, in a little bit shorter time. Um, as Ian was saying, um, I personally really think that the four years uh, in the Irish model is a really good idea so that we could give, that the universities could give as many opportunities as possible for the students to really go into the field, to see the actual work, to see, um, um, you know, learn from the practitioners um, that are out there. So, so once we kind of get to that stage, of course, um, it's really important to have kind of partnerships with with uh, organizations that are are working in this sector and um, so whether they're in a kind of rural, rural settings in smaller towns or or in bigger um, cities or bigger organizations i don't quite know yet but absolutely i think it's the circus spirit of of kind of sharing sharing and learning from yeah from and you oscar you mentioned when you were talking about your school that the, the there hadn't been any formal uh, training for the trainers. They had trained as circus performers, but they hadn't trained us how to be a tr teacher. No, that was that was the that was the classic the classic situation. I mean, in in the in the traditional sense, circus teaching comes from the from someone running someone running an act and then sharing it with his son or with his daughter in later in life when they're. So it's 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 been one of those sort of um, gurus or or people people who are actually. I invent something and then I teach it to you and you teach it to someone else. So it's been uh, uh, on the performance side, but now the performance side has opened up. So you can, you can do it as you would a theater school or as you would a dance school, you would meet different professors, different thoughts on what, on the, on the practitioners that you're on the practice that you're, that you're, that you're engaging in. And it's the same for, for a circus artist these days. Uh, but teachers, uh, I suppose, for natural reasons, natural reasons comes a little bit after it. After that, so I think we are hoping for uh, students in this program that are both already uh, very well established and professional circus people who are who have been been working with circus skills for a long time, but also people who are maybe. To add on to tag along with Ola there to people who are maybe young and interested in a career with uh, working with leisure, leisure education, uh, uh, maybe maybe in, who would who would have become climbing instruction in uh, who would have been working in a in a uh, in a school in, in leisure activities, but so they can bring in the circus there. That's where that's where we sort of want to find our 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 students. Okay. Uh, and there's another question coming in here about international um, international students. I mean, um, maybe Ian or like the, your NUIG yeah. is open to all nationalities, isn't it? Yeah, no, I, of course it is. Yes, and and there would be uh, exchanges uh, hopefully happening as well. I mean, once this. The curriculum is set up. We have visiting student policies where from other universities can come and take several modules within different degrees, depending on what the own the criteria for their home university is. But in terms of just recruitment, uh, if you wanted to come and study in Ireland, you know that's open to everybody as well. So there is that kind of international opportunity. There's two other questions I, I saw there on the chat. Just one from uh, Joanna. Uh, Williams, I think, uh, just to say uh, in relation to uh, her own circus project uh, 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 in, uh, I can't see it there, Clock Jordan. Oh, yeah. Yes, yeah, so um, of course there would be opportunities, hopefully we already have a module uh, that we're developing which will have kind of an internship element to it uh, and we will be sending students off to uh, hopefully work with people uh, in, in, in those particular circus schools and in, in those projects. Um, so yes, very much so we, we would need support and we would need to put people on place etc so we do envisage that very much as um, the degree being part of uh, bringing in the whole the whole uh, community circus um, networks that we have uh, nationally here as well and then I think Quivo Doherty has a, a bar Doherty bar sorry has <laughs> a, uh, has a question about uh, the human body there as well yeah, and if we would have a if we would have a module on that that's yourself Quivo yeah uh, sorry um, uh, so uh, uh, we of course have we had a lot of debate about this actually where it would happen it's definitely going to happen in the curriculum uh, we already have a module on that um, in terms of you know and we've been looking at progressions 
so in terms of the, the, the way things are looking at the moment, and um, we're having a meeting next week on this, but largely in the first year uh, uh, of the degree, there's a huge amount spent on kind of safety, uh, physical safety, um, but also on knowledge about the body so that you're safe in what you're doing with your body as well and how you're teaching others in relation to the body as well. So that was kind of paramount. There's been a lot of debate about that. So that's, that's key for us, I guess, there as well. So um, There's another, while you're on about um, who the course is for, etc. Ian, there's another uh, question in there from Aidan Phelan about, will it be open for mature students? Oh, uh, I, I, would, I would imagine so, most definitely. I think, you know, uh, as Ula was mentioning already, definitely within the, the curriculum design as part of the project, we also have to have, um, you know, a validation system. So if you come in with experience of various things already, uh, there's a validation system so that we can say, oh, look, you actually have been, you know, juggling professionally for whatever, you know, 20 years, you don't have to take this particular component of the degree, okay? Um, uh, it's probably a bad example, but uh, that sort of sense of you can, um, you, can, you can substitute some of those things. But mature students just generally without circus experience, we're still trying to figure out a little bit and it's going to come down to the national context about how much kind of circus experience you'll need before you come to the degree. But from the university perspective, it's all about getting students into degrees, so they'll want to cast the net as, as wide as possible. So from an NUI Galway perspective, we'd be very welcoming of, of, of mature students and uh, of uh, all students, I guess, to try to come to this degree. But we have to be careful and methodical on how we are, 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 are planning the degree to acknowledge the differences in the different countries with the different amount of circus infrastructure that there is in the different countries. So that's why the, the project will take so long. It's going to be, uh, as I said, till 2022. But mm -hmm. um, we will definitely, and there will be pressure on the university side of things to try and cast the net as wide as possible. Great. And just what you said there about the, um, the juggling or, mm -hmm. you know, handstands or whatever it might be, mm -hmm. um, I think Oscar brought it up and Ulla maybe about uh, if you have a certain amount of experience already, supposing you are already a world-class juggler, do you then need to complete a module in juggling or can that get validated directly, you know? If, if, we, if we get it the way we want it, it should be a validation system that takes care of, care of situations like that maybe replace it with something else that is more interesting and more, more, more something that is more useful for that particular student, or maybe by them doing, doing by it just being validated. Yeah, sorry. Uh, yeah, I'm just wondering, so if you're a world-class juggler, because you were saying people are artists and then they teach, if you're a world-class juggler, and if the, say the module was on how to teach the basics of juggling, would that, would a world class juggler know how to teach the basics of juggling? Like that's a. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That's a good question. Yeah. It's a really good question. That's always a good question, and it's exactly the kind of things we're always struggling with because people yeah. do so many things without actually knowing why they do uh, what they do, and if if they're good, they can fake it for a long time <laughs> before you understand that this person has no idea what they're why they're actually why they're actually using this method. Um, so that is, it is a very good point and it's, it's part of, of our work to try and make validations that, that, that shores, shores up that situation. Uh, I mean, the, the validation system in a sense is there to, uh, to help acknowledge things, but at the same time, it can only, it has to correspond directly, quite directly, to be honest. So obviously this is youth and social circus. So I think there was a question there about, uh, the emphasis on kind of um, uh, social change, et cetera. And, and that is key to the curriculum as we are writing it at the moment as well. Um, uh, there are, you know, modules, uh, uh, particularly on kind of the, the values, the social policies in relation to, um, uh, this, you know, inclusion, et cetera, social communities, interculturalism, all of those things are, are, are emphasized throughout the curriculum. Um, but also just as you say, you can't just come in and say, I'm a professional juggler, therefore I can teach, uh, juggling in a particular social context. No, you can't to an extent. Mm. You should really take the module and it's important that you do. And really, why are you doing this degree if you don't want to learn those things in a certain way? Okay. So while we say there is validation, that is just to acknowledge that there, there, is, there is other people out there who perhaps have been teaching juggling uh, in those particular contexts and that we have that option for them. But it's not just that, you know, uh, you, you kind of rock up with your, your 20 years in, in the professional circus and this degree is handed to you. 
nothing like that at all because it is very much the emphasis on youth and social circus and youth and so social circus teaching uh, pedagogy as, as, as is the, the formal title of the actual uh, degree. So, I mean, uh, exactly. Always, always, I'm go sorry. Ahead. Sorry, go ahead. <laughs> sorry, go ahead, Oscar. No, I suppose we're always, I mean, in the social and in the social circus world, you're always t talking about what the skills are for rather than the skills themselves. You're always talking about why we're teaching people juggling rather than 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 actually teaching people juggling uh mm -hmm. it has to do with building self-esteem with building a, a new skill with finding finding a connection with your own body with, with a ton of different things uh but the the prime goal generally speaking for social circus practices is not that people get very good at juggling uh, so it's more important that a that a social circus juggling teacher. It's, the juggling has become our become our example here. Now. I'm not sure if that's really really. Uh, uh, but but if you if that is what you are, then you have you have the possibility to use your skill uh, for for some social in some social context for some social uh, outcome. So would uh, that, you say that the primary goal is to become excellent teachers rather than? Uh, excellent circus artists because we've all had teachers and really I mean I had uh, the most horrendous maths teacher I could ever imagine and I'm sure he was very good at maths but he was not very good at teaching <laughs> and, and um, you know so for me I feel like this is really geared towards creating great teachers Absolutely. Great teachers and working in the context of youth and social circus and, and, and then kind of learning those vital skills that can then be used in, in so many other professions as well. So, so I think uh, definitely I can see that Joanna was asking about the kind of what's the focus on the, on the uh, student and the, and the future graduate to be able to work in, in various different social contexts. And I think that's exactly one of the, one of the keys to be able to adapt your work. Uh, around the target group and around the, the context where you're working. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, and the, somebody, Joanna has suggested that the word facilitator is maybe better than teacher. That's a debate. I yeah. guess the, the degree is called, uh, it's pedagogy is the word that's used. And I guess that's, that's, that's an approach uh, of teaching, I guess, in a way. So that leaves it open that it could be interpreted in, in those different contexts as well. It's not that this is a vocational degree the way, see, this is the issue that we have, right? So we have the, tra the teacher training college, which is quite vocational. We have the performing arts, which is not. We have the research university, which is not. So we're trying to marry this, this particular amount of, of modules and credits, I guess, that can be adapted into the different contexts. So that's where we're at at the moment, as I said. So yeah. we're trying to figure out how we can do that. But there isn't, there is all this opportunity for other things to happen as well within the degree that will qualify you for other aspects as well. So it isn't that in the, in the Irish context, there isn't really uh, as many career opportunities as there would be in other contexts for you to have circus training as part of a teacher training, et cetera. Um, yeah. So we have to adapt and, and figure it out. So it's, it's lovely to, to get this feedback from the likes of, of, of Joanna uh, there as well on this. So uh, uh, thank you for, for those questions. Yes. Yeah. And if I can just uh, add as well, again, because the national contexts are so different. So, for example, in Finland, um, every teacher in Finland must have a master's degree course. And uh, one of their, objective in their objectives in there is that circus teacher would be, you know, just as um, acknowledged as a profession as, as any teacher's um, profession in Finland. So I think over there, they will certainly aim for the, for the master's degree um, option um, as probably I would imagine uh, as soon as it's possible so that service teachers will be uh, will have the same rights and, and, and be recognized um, just like any teacher. Mm -hmm. And there's another one more question here and then I think we're nearly at time um, and this one is about how, how how we help people, it's from Amelie there, is how we help people to set up their own circus schools and lead their own projects and work with other national agencies. And it's exactly leading on from that point that Ula just made about in Ireland, there isn't so many professional opportunities. So um, will this equip people to, uh, you know, to 
become independent and set up their own uh, circus school, do we feel? Is that one of the objectives? <laughs> well, one of the, I, I, you might add to this, Oscar and Ian, but, um, but um, one of the core um, competencies that we're looking at uh, is, is kind of project management and uh, in a kind of widest possible, uh, looking at it in, in the widest possible way. So, so really to have a kind of wider understanding on, on um, the, what's needed to, to, to develop and manage um, educational projects and, and to have an understanding of what goes on in an organization. So from a kind of funding to partnership building, to evaluation, to, um, you know, program delivery, all these kind of elements of, of kind of project management. I would Is say also, you could add also that in the sort of national implementations that will take place, there will be modules working on finding out what's, what goes in your particular environment, who to contact, where to, where to, go, where to come with your project. Uh, and these are things that you can put in, into, your, into, your, into your degree, I would say. At least that's my hope for Sweden, because that's one of my biggest sort of, this is what I think, this is what I hope is going to happen, uh, that people feel the confidence to just uh, contact municipalities and politicians and whoever might need, need to be contacted. Great. Yeah, I just just add on that just to, that there's a huge emphasis in the actual um, uh, curriculum that we've we've devised so far on policy, but also on kind of the the, the student themselves progressing from being kind of teacher led to be very much uh, a student led. Uh, I guess in the way that it's looking at in the, in the in the final years and the projects that are there and the emphasis on independent learning, etc. The kind of graduate that would come out from this degree would be very much a kind of a self starter type person they'll, they'll they'll be used to having to create things on their own to come up with projects um, and they'll also have a, a, a lot of those skill sets that the other the my other colleagues here have just uh, mentioned in relation to all those things so the answer for me Amelie would be yes they, they will be prepared to go out and, and set up their own circus schools and, and hopefully go out and do lots of innovative things which will really bring on the sector you know Absolutely, and here, here to that. And <laughs> there's, we need more circus artists in Ireland. Um, and there's an, a question here in from Shane. We're, we're really nearly down to the time. So if anyone has any questions, you'd better type them quick. Um, uh, are there plans to integrate elements of this with existing teacher training for preschool, primary, secondary school modules on technical as well as youth, social and youth circus pedagogy? Any plans to integrate? Uh, Come in briefly. Uh, uh, yeah, so uh, we're not at the national implementation plan yet, but obviously uh, there would have to be a conversation had, I think, uh, with um, the teacher training colleges in Ireland as well. And it's already been part of the model that we've looked at. Uh, and I've, I've analysed some of the, the way that they deliver their teaching. I haven't talked to them directly yet, obviously, uh, leading from my own university and perspective. But I think that that should be part of it as well. And that it should be something that they, they uh, could, I think they could adapt with the model that we've chosen, as I said, where we have this kind of 60 credits. That is this core uh, youth and social service, but all these other credits that you can get from other sides of things. So the fact that it'll work so well on the teacher training side in Finland, uh, in the University of Tampere, which is a teacher training college, would mean for me that I think it, it could easily transfer to the teacher training colleges in Ireland. But obviously I'm not a representative of them. So it is something that's in the mix though, I think uh, very much so. Excellent, excellent. And then just uh, Joanna just points out that as, uh, as Amelie said, says that there may not be enough opportunities here, there also aren't enough teachers here. So um, that's uh, certainly true. Um, so I think we're nearly at time. Um, do any of you want to add anything, any final comments or remarks? Kiva, has that been, has that been interesting? You and me have been sitting on the sidelines listening to these yeah. experts. Uh, <laughs> I think it sounds super interesting. Um, yeah, I'll apply. Can she do it as a post grad once she's done her sciencey thing? That's uh, what she did. Project. That's the next project. Yes, <laughs> it's the next step, I guess. Obviously, yeah. Uh, the degree that we're looking at, uh, any kind of BA degree, has to kind of be designed as to way that it, it allows for you to progress to master's level as well. So it's part of what we're doing at the moment, but. Uh, as we've just been discussing, the, the issues around just getting the BA uh, uh, sorted will, will be the first step. But um, 
Uh, I think, you know, if that's successful, we, we, I think the group that we're in would all have the ambition to do more, I'd say. Um, so, yeah, hopefully, yeah. And um, um, can I just add, um, just uh, because, um, because the project is funded by Erasmus Plus, which we're super grateful for, um, the curriculum will be available afterwards um, for, for any other countries to, and university to, to adapt. So it's really about kind of um, helping the, the wider sector and, and sharing what's been um, designed here. I mean, it's so super exciting. Like we've, we've been on this little wee journey here in Ireland for the last little while. Circus is a super emerging young art form. And in the last 10 years, we've just seen it explode. And we now have some world-class circus artists in this country um, that I just am so proud of. And I really, really, really would love to be able to say we have an actual circus degree here. We have highly qualified circus teachers coming out. We're creating lots of little circus bunnies like Kivo, Dardy Bar there, and they're all going to go off and multiply and change the world. And, and I, I think it would be just such an amazing thing to have this course here for our future generations and to really embed circus into education across all of these levels. And that was something that you touched upon about the transferable skills of, of circus, that it isn't just for art and high-end circus artists, it's for everybody. It can be in, in play therapy or in, in youth work or in social work or in, um, in physical education, in all sorts of uh, child development. I think it's just an all-round skill for everybody. Everybody should do it. It should be compulsory. <laughs> um, that's just me going off. Um, so thank you ever so much, everybody, for all your super duper insights, information, knowledge, and for creating this fantastic thing. And um, I think I'm just so delighted to see it coming in and I look forward to helping in whatever way we can in the future going forward. Ula? Um, I am just going to post a link to the project website here on the chat so people can see it there. Um, this is the project website that is uh, um, um, coordinated by the University of Tampere in Finland and then of course you can follow the project also uh, via the Galway Community Service uh, website and social media and the, the O'Donoghue Center from NUI Galway as well. So um, yeah just a huge thank you to, to all our lovely panelists and, uh, and to you Lucy and to Leana behind the screen for, for um, joining us this afternoon and um, Anybody who's interested, just get in touch and um, yeah, let's do this together. Super.